because somebody was asking, somebody new to cutters was asking, how do you add a shadow to a word? So I was trying to make a video and it wouldn't work. So I can show you that right now. If you um, go to text and fonts and select your font, I think um, I'll select a different font here because I want to cut one. Let's do, um, I'll just do Samantha because it's quick and easy. And um, I was doing a, one called um, Creative Genius. You can all be a creative genius. <laughs> Click on accept. Type any word you want with any font you want. Get it laid out the way you want with the letters as close together as you want and weld it all together to make a word or make a make your title or whatever you you want to do with it. And then to add a shadow, you click on the shadow layer and make it the thickness that you want. You also have the option to make it blacked out or not. If I, I turn off the blackout, you see that the loops are open with it not blacked out. With it blacked out, they're not open. It's a solid background. So you can click on Accept, and you get the shadow on a new layer, so you can change the colors to be whatever color you want. and you have a, a nice shadow. Now I could also do multiple shadows. Let's say that I hold control shift and click on that. I have this I can do again. What if I wanted multiple shadow layers? I can select the whole text I go to edit, duplicate, and nested duplicate. And here Again, you can make your gap as big or little as you want, and you have the option to do blackout or not. If I keep my gap at 8.08, .08, I can get up to 4. They look pretty nice. Um, you can set your colors to be whatever you'd like. And then um, maybe I want it to be lighter. I can def define a custom color and make it even lighter if I want. So you, you can have two different total colors, and then you can click Preview to see what it's going to look like. And if you like that effect, you can accept. And now we have a background. If I make this one, sometimes I like to make the one on top to be black just so that I can see it better. So um, I have the original, then I have a layer that that has some holes in it here. And this one is still two separate pieces here with a hole in it. The next one is actually got the pieces welded together. And then there's uh, the background. So I can undo this and get them all stacked up. And you can get some really nice effects by, by layering your text. And then you can add this to other designs. The other thing that we can do, this was another question that was asked, was um, we can do an inset shadow. So let's just, uh, I'll go into basic shapes and find something. Maybe we could do a, we'll just do one of these seven point stars. And we can, we can add a shadow to shapes just the same. And we can give it an outside shadow, or if we put a minus in front of it, we can get an inset shadow. We can make it the shadow rounded, mitered, or beveled. In this case, it doesn't make much difference, but I can accept. And now, if I, I'll use my green mat so you can see, I've got the original shape, and then I've got a shape that is smaller, perfectly the same size. Now if I want to, I can take that outside line and do a very big shadow. Let's say we'll make it a positive number. Let's say we'll make it a point 
And notice that since I have it rounded, it gives me a, an effect of a flower. So you can make a flower from a star simply by creating a shadow that's got rounded edges. So we, we have many options in this software. In our nested duplicates, we can do the same thing. We can create um, either duplicate by size or duplicate by shadowing and get totally different effects. And I showed those last week.